we're running a little bit ahead, which maybe is not such a bad thing. It's a little warm. Um, our next speaker, I'd like to introduce Mr. David Smalley. He is the editor of American Atheist Magazine, resident Texan, father of school-age children, and uh, I'm happy he was uh, able to join us today. How's everyone doing today? Good. All right. no, this is a big deal. How's everyone doing today? My wife pointed one out to me a minute ago that said, what would Jefferson do? How cool is that? Love it. Look, we, we all know what it's like to be upset with a friend. We know what it's like to be frustrated and angry with the people we love. But the most hurtful thing anyone can do to us is disappoint us by breaking our trust. Well, it's a sad day in the state of Texas when the people that we've entrusted with our children's education abuse that authority to further their own political agenda. I understand that most of the citizens in this great state claim to be Christian, but they didn't get that way by choice. More than likely, they got that way by indoctrination. And now, those indoctrinated adults are leaders of education that are trying to indoctrinate our children. They're accomplishing this by using the history textbooks that are paid for by people of all religions to push the ideology of one. A few of the people I invited to come with me today said no. They said fundamentalist conservative Christians have their agenda and liberals and atheists have their agenda and I want no part of either side. They didn't realize it, but the only reason we're here today is because we want no part of either side. Our only agenda is to prevent agendas from being assert, inserted into history. I talked to my 10-year-old son, Braden, about this issue. He seemed confused as to why this was even a topic at all. He said, Dad, why can't they just teach us real history even if they don't like it? <laughs> you see, Braden wants to learn about all thinkers not just Christian ones. Braden wants to learn about equal values, not just conservative ones. Braden wants to learn about a free country, not a Christian nation. <laughs> Let me be clear, even as the editor of the American Atheist Magazine, I have no problem with Christians practicing their religion on their own time in their own church. And in fact, I support the constitutional right to do so. But our textbooks and our public schools are paid for by Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, Christians, Native Americans, atheists, agnostics, and many other people that all go by one equal name, Texans. As you've heard, the curriculum changes include removing Thomas Jefferson as an Enlightenment thinker, and he's being replaced by two Christians, among others, John Calvin and St. Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> what will our children learn about John Calvin? That he believed in predestination and that the Christian God has already decided what will happen to each one of them? What kind of motivation is that to work hard when your future is already planned? Perhaps they'll learn about John Calvin's strong support of the original church ideals in the New Testament where it was shameful for women to speak in church and that they were supposed to submit to men. I sure don't want my young daughter, Talissa, to be taught that it's a respectable way of life to support such oppression of women or that she should ever submit to anyone because that's how indoctrination starts. <laughs> the most fearful part of our children learning to respect John Calvin's ideology is his overwhelming desire to integrate church and state. He believed that for a government to be successful, they can only allow one religion Sound familiar? The leader of Iran thinks the same way. In 1550, John Calvin's clergy actually visited homes of people to be sure they weren't violating church rules by doing things like dancing. How American is that, right? Uh, this is an enlightened thinker that our children should respect. I have a warning for the Christians in Texas who think they want religion emphasized in public schools. Be careful what you wish for. What happens when your child's teacher is Catholic 
and she brushes off John Calvin to focus most of the time on St. Thomas Aquinas and what a wonderful Catholic saint he is. And she goes into detail about how the Catholics had it right all along, sending your child home questioning why your family is worshiping the wrong way. But mommy, Jesus meant to actually eat his body and actually drink his blood. Why don't we do that? How far will you allow that discussion to go? At what point will you, as a conservative Christian, admit that our public schools are not the place to discuss religion? And then, what do we say to the Muslim and Hindu taxpayers in Texas? Thank you for the money, but we don't respect your religion, so here, learn about ours. We're not supposed to be funding church. We're supposed to be funding equal and public education. And it's obvious when you're leaning this far to the right, trying to push a conservative agenda, and you become this polarizing using our children against us, that you're only inviting others to form an agenda against you, causing even more divisive action within our curriculum. The Muslim parents will start to ask, well, what about the great Muslim leaders in history? And they will have every right to do so. And when the Hindus will ask, what about the great Hindu leaders in history? And they will be validated as well. The only response could be, well, this is not a Muslim or Hindu country. It's a Christian country. And that is a direct violation of our US Constitution. It's important to remember that the freedom of religion includes a freedom from religion. We would be taking a step back of more than 200 years if we start undoing everything our founding fathers stood for. To the Board of Education, I can only say this. These kids will eventually grow up and discover the facts that you're trying to hide from them. And hiding that information will only make these young adults not trust you. By hiding this information, you're admitting that you have no real answer for the secular beginnings of our great country and the respected secular people in our history. Deep down, you're hoping that if you can keep these kids in the dark long enough to have them indoctrinated instead of educated, you won't have to deal with the questions that you can't answer. Yeah. Questions like, how can people be good without gods? How can one have morals without a holy book? How can one be a, a giving, smart leader, yet not be a Christian? Don't you think it's much more responsible and academic to answer those questions honestly, rather than running from them by rewriting history? And to those of you here today in support of the secular school system, I say thank you for coming. Keep setting good examples by being role models for your children. Keep showing the children of Texas and America that we can be good with our religions. And most of all, keep fighting for a Texas Board of Education that will be fair to all of the children in Texas. Thank you. Yeah, one of the things as I was going through, like, and literally, it's almost like